So what does the title of this video mean? Drive-by deep space tourism. Well, what I'm talking about is the ability to capture images of deep sky objects like these, these galaxies and nebulae, in very short amounts of time with minimal fuss and bother thanks to modern CMOS astronomy cameras like the one on my telescope here. If you look on the lower end there, that red cylinder cylindrical object that's the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro camera mounted on a six inch refractor on an equatorial mount and it just makes acquiring images these days with fantastic software like SharpCap which automatically aligns and stacks the images in a way that was unheard of even just a few years ago and it's opened up a whole new world of what's known as electronically assisted astronomy, EAA. And I thought I would go through just a few quick examples here of what you can do with a small telescope. This is a six inch refractor. Admittedly, it's a pretty big refractor, but any six inch reflector would be able to do almost as well. This is an image of the Crab Nebula being acquired in sharp cap. This is sped up quite dramatically by more than a thousand percent, if I recall. These images are being taken every 20 seconds. And if you watch, the clarity of the nebula will get smoother and smoother as the noise is reduced. Each additional frame that's captured by the camera is aligned and stacked on the previous frame. And it allows the noise to be filtered out leaving only the object, the signal from the object and the stars. And that histogram on the bottom operates the same as you would expect from a program like Photoshop when you're editing photos, except that it's accessible real-time. And with a little post-processing work in Photoshop, you can get an image like that of the Crab Nebula in just a few minutes. 15 minutes perhaps. Here is the Merope Nebula in the Pleiades. Again, this is sped up dramatically. You can see each frame is being taken down in the lower right corner. That's the exposure time. And again, I can adjust the, the histogram sliders there from black on the left, white on the right, to get a, a pleasing view, view of the object. And again, the more images that get stacked, the less noise there will be. And pictures that would have taken hours to collect in the past can now be done in just 10 or 15 minutes with these amazing one-shot color cameras that are out now. Star clusters go very quickly. You can image the stars quite fast. It's M35 and it's a little associated, more distant star cluster in Gemini. And this was an object I'd never looked at before. I just saw it in the uh, Star Atlas and told the software to point the telescope that way. It slewed up to it. And I started taking shots, in this case 30 second photos. And again, after 15 or 20 minutes and a little post-processing in Photoshop to get the colors up. You can do amazing things. This is a famous object, the Horsehead Nebula in Orion. And this is another long 30-second exposure. But you can see the uh, you can see the grain and the noise slowly dissipating as more and more frames are stacked. And the reason there is so much noise is because like on a digital camera when you're shooting at night you turn the ISO settings way up which lets you drastically reduce the shutter speed or lower the shutter speed but it increases the noise in the image. And it's the same with this camera except that it's called gain on these CMOS cameras. 
but it functions exactly the same way. If you look on the right hand side, the gain in the shot is set at 350. Uh, you can go up to 400 without getting too much. If you're below 300, the images are very smooth almost from the beginning. And this, of course, is the Great Orion Nebula in the belt of Orion. And that's just a, a beautiful picture in just 10 minutes total exposure time. And each individual frame was only 10 seconds. This is the Eskimo Nebula and Gemini again, just 10 second shots. And this was another object I'd never looked at. I'd never seen it. It was just a faint planetary nebula. <laughs> Nicknamed the Medusa Nebula. I believe it's Abel 21 or 22. I'll have to look it up. Uh, but this was another 30 second shots stacked up. And that's a, that's a nebula that would be almost invisible to the naked eye, and especially in a 6 inch telescope, but it captures just fine. This is NGC 40, a bright what are known as planetary nebulas. That star in the center of it exploded sometime in the past and that reddish cloud of gas is expanding outwards. And those are some of my favorite objects because they all look so completely different from one another. But again, these are objects that with the naked eye would have no color, very little structure visible in a scope this size. But these modern cameras and image capturing techniques just make so much possible. And I was reading Rod Molise's wonderful blog, uh, Uncle Rod's Astro blog, and in one of his entries he mentioned that, you know, as he was getting older and uh, he'd spent so many years simply looking at objects through the eyepiece that were basically just gray smudges and as he was getting older and he wanted to finally see what the objects actually looked like and that's what got him first going with electronically assisted astronomy and and I agree with that sentiment wholeheartedly I'm in the same boat as I get older and uh, I have less time with work. I don't have the darkest skies in the world by any stretch. This is a suburban sky, not 20 miles from Salt Lake City. And uh, I just want to be able to get some picture postcards of these objects. They'll never make the astronomy picture of the day or probably published in any magazines. But nevertheless, being able to acquire images of this quality would have been unheard of even five years ago with the ease it can be done now. And so it's a wonderful time to be involved in astronomy if you like astrophotography. Uh, just about any size telescope with one of these modern cameras like this can just get simply amazing imagery. And I encourage you, if you're at all interested, to, uh, to give it a try and take a look. Uh, and please, in the comments, let me know if there are any objects that you have heard of or would like me to try to see, uh, or point the telescope at, and I'll get some images of them for you, and I'll make a follow-up video to this at some point, and we'll show them off, and uh, I'll make a video as I'm doing the, uh, the capturing and describe the process. But anyway, thank you for watching and indulging me and in showing off a few pictures, and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you.